yeah. Good evening, folks. It is Wednesday, hump day, here in the middle of the week. It has been a rainy, stormy day here in the Delta, but hopefully everything is going to hold off tonight, uh, enough for tonight so that we can just kind of gather around for a little bit. We can chit-chat for a minute. We can uh, get some prayer requests in here, and then we can spend a little bit of time in the book of Galatians. So come on in. Let me know that you are here. Let me know that you are, are going to be with us tonight for Bible study. And then we want to encourage you to go ahead and share this uh, Bible study out there. You know what to do. Go ahead and uh, get the get the word out there. Go ahead and send it on. We want to know who all is here, who all is hanging out with us, who all is dodging storms with us. I'm sitting here in my home office looking out the window, got the, sh the blinds raised. And, uh, you know, it has just been fun to watch this all day. It really has. It's been interesting to watch. I'm very thankful that we did not get the brunt of the storms that I thought we were going to. Although there is one right now that is a bit on the uh, northern side of us going in toward uh, wind, maybe a little bit now north of wind. But, boy, that's a powerhouse storm that we've got to watch. There's been thunderstorm warnings. There's been tornado warnings. Uh, you know, the state of Alabama has been chewed up today with it. So big storm system here in the south. But uh, thank the Lord we have missed it. Now, I am I'm, I'm going to tell you, we're probably going to see some rain here before this thing is all said and done and some wind that's going to be coming out of it. So uh, just kind of get ready. Hey, folks, come on in. We want to know that you're here. Let us know that you're watching. I see several of you uh, beginning to drop in. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for uh, making this your place of gathering for Wednesday night. I'm in the middle of sharing this, and I want you to do the same thing. Remember, uh, all of these options, anytime that you like, love, and care, and you hit those buttons, what you're doing is you are helping it out in the Facebook algorithms, and then uh, like, love, care, and then share. That puts it on your wall, and that allows us to get even further into your neck of the woods and puts us out there into your neighborhood with your friends, your family, so on and so forth. So uh, anytime that, that, that you get that chance, always make sure that you engage, like, love, and care. Use those buttons. And then we want to encourage you to share and to share that out there with your friends and your family. I am almost done, and then I'll be able to get in and to chit-chat. Uh, for those of you who are uh, up on a ridge tonight, I'm thinking that you might have some troubles tonight with some of the wind that's coming through, so your internet may be a little bit iffy. Mine has given me fits. I mean, give me fits all day today, so I'm hoping that mine at least will last for just a little while. Uh, who all we got here? There's Johnny Smith. There's Miss Dina Smith. There's Miss Sandy. Hello, hello. There's Dr. Jones and Miss Pam. They are hanging out with us tonight. Come on in. There's Mary Weddington. So good to see all of you guys. So come on in. We got a lot of people that's on. I can't see everybody, so come on in. And uh, say hello. Make sure that you are settled in. Got your Bibles. We're going to be in Galatians kicking off chapter 5 tonight. Uh, like I said, we're going to do our best to be uh, fairly brief. I don't want to wade into something and then the internet go out and you guys lose it or, or miss it or, uh, you know, this thing get pixelated or all of that good stuff. So we want to just be... Uh, we want to be wise, and we'll just pick this thing up next Wednesday night. I mean, it is no big deal. We want to make sure that we cover everything that Paul is saying, and uh, we want to make sure that all of this, that all of this is captured, because this is a powerful letter about religious freedom, and we do not want to miss anything, anything at all. So what we want to do right now is we want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and get us your prayer request. So right now, there in the comments, if you will just give us your prayer request, I want to go ahead and share with you the ones that I have already. This came in this morning uh, on our coffee chat time. This came from Brian Ponder. Uh, Brian's our friend from Colt Baptist Church. And first, we want to continue to remember Brian. Okay, he is still uh, kind of muddling through several surgeries to try to remove the trach so that he can talk again. So we want to continue to remember our friend Brian. And he has also said uh, to place Carol Ward and Grady Hamrick. That's Carol Ward and Grady Hamrick uh, on our prayer list. So we want to add those two names. And then uh, Debbie Tacker also uh, asked this morning uh, for prayer for her for strength and guidance. Strength and guidance for Debbie Tacker. And that is the, the two that I have thus far. And so if you have any additional prayer requests tonight, we want to continue 
to list those. So go ahead and share. Go ahead and uh, let us have those so we can get those on our prayer list. We want to uh, remember, obviously, we will remember our church families as we are moving forward. We're trying to get in. Uh, remember this uh, remodel team, the transition team, as uh, everything hopefully uh, soon will begin to fall in place and we can get our building back to where uh, it needs to be. We want to pray for those incredible folks that are doing that. Pray for this Easter egg hunt uh, event that's coming up on April the 3rd. Uh, that's going to be taking place. That's a Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. All kinds of fun and goodies for the kiddos of all ages. And we want to just help uh, make sure that we get the word out. But we want to pray that that is all a God thing and that God will use that to bring bring those families into uh, our Ridgewood family. That's the whole the whole thing. This is not about the Easter egg. This is not about the candy. It is about Jesus. And it is about sharing Jesus with our community in a way to bringing them in. Uh, Dina, the lady who stays with my dad is having cancer surgery on her face Friday. Okay. Betty Brown. Okay. Thank you, Dina. Let's write that down. Betty. Betty Brown. Okay, and cancer surgery on Friday. Thank you for sharing that. All right, folks, any others, make sure this is a good time to go ahead and get those prayer requests in. Uh, we want to pray. It's something that, uh, that I think is exciting. Of course, last year during this time, so many things were canceled due to the pandemic. And one of the things that were canceled was many, many, many church camps uh, all across our country. And, and even right here in Tri-County, our children's camp, our uh, youth camp was canceled. I am so excited to, to announce that, if, in case you haven't already heard that, they have already uh, met as a camp board uh, with our new Association of Missionary, and camp is on for 2021. So they are now in the planning stages. There's going to be a children's camp, and there's going to be a youth camp. And uh, I talked with uh, Brother Kirk this afternoon, and he is in need of some help. And so uh, let me just go ahead and say that you are going to be hearing from me in the near future for specific roles that uh, we need help with at our associational camp. Uh, there, again, there's different positions, and it's not like you've got to go there and stay. It's not like you've got to do it every day. But if you make a commit to one day, uh, maybe two days, and just do some, do, do some different things. And so there is going to be opportunities for men and women to serve at, and this is spe in specific the youth camp is where we want to focus in on that. That's the way I'm understanding it from Brother Kirk. But uh, I'll be talking with him. I'll be getting a list of uh, different things that is needed and how we at Ridgewood can lace up our boots and get in and get busy. Okay, Brian, I see that. Uh, I have a touch of pneumonia. Okay, well, we don't want any of that, do we? So we want to pray for Brian to, that uh, all of this pneumonia will get out of there. We ain't got no time for that, buddy. I know you don't have time for it. Uh, other prayer requests, go ahead and let us know. Uh, let us know what your prayer requests are before we dive into Galatians chapter 5. You know, I, I uh, speaking of church camp, guys, I love church camp. Uh, Denise and I spent years, years doing four to five weeks uh, a year, uh, you know, per summer, uh, involved in church camps of some role. Uh, I, I was the camp pastor. I was the worship guy. Uh, I was the Bible teacher. I was this. I, I was. I just. I served in so many places all around the state uh, in different church camps. I was the. Uh, I was the guitar teacher for our statewide praise works camp that's held every year at Washita. I was the guitar instructor for, I think it was five years, maybe six years, five years for sure. Uh, five years, five consecutive years. Had an absolute blast. So I love, I'm a big, big fan of, of church camps. David Watson and Sheila Hobbs, health issues. Okay, we want to do that. So uh, if you get a chance and can help out at our church camp uh, here at the association, man, 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 yeah, you need to do that. Oh, holy smokes, you need to do that. Okay, this is David Watson and Sheila Hobbs. Okay. 
Okay, we want to do that. All right, others, go ahead and get them in. Others, go ahead and get them in. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say that we had a tremendous day on Sunday. If you were able to be with us on campus, it was a huge day. We had the largest attendance in person that we have had in, in about a year. Uh, we had 60 folks logged in on campus on, uh, on, on Sunday. And I was just, it's so exciting to see that. Um, Brother Larry and uh, Brother Larry and Brother uh, Norval helped me on Friday and we were able to uh, get some extra seating out. And so that really, it paid a, uh, paid a, a good price for that because we needed it. And so um, uh, what we want to do now is we just want to encourage uh, our friends and family that if they are physically able, if they are comfortable, that we want them to come on back and to join with us on campus and so that they can be a part of our in uh, in service services, our in person service at Kansas City. I'm trying to read Miss Carol. Uh, I'll pray he finds Christ before it's too late. He is in a Mr. Carol, Mr. Carol. Okay, we want to remember that. Thank you. I was I, I wasn't reading that correctly, Miss Judy. I'm sorry, Mr. Carol. All right, that is from Miss Judy Davis. All right. All right. He is in a Memphis hospital. That means that that's a salvation issue as well. And that's the critical part right there. We want uh, uh, spiritual, spiritual needs right there. Spiritual needs at all. Okay, folks, any other prayer requests before we spend some time in prayer? And then we will dive off briefly this evening into the book of Galatians. Like I said, I've got the weather pulled up. I've got the uh, uh, a pretty elaborate radar system that I, I, I'm blessed to be able to watch. And and uh, I kind of know when it's coming and what's not coming and I can chart it and all of that good stuff. And so um, I, I just don't want us to get out and about and get in the middle of something and then all of a sudden our internet get, get kind of uh, shifted offline. Mm. All right. Uh, we're going to just uh, take a little bit of time right now and we're going to just uh, go to prayer. And we're going to pray for these. We got uh, uh, Betty Brown. We've got David Watson, Sheila Hobbs, Mr. Carroll, and we have got uh, Debbie Tacker, uh, Brian, Brian Ponder, and we have got Carol Ward and Grady Hammer. That is the list that I've got tonight. So, uh, please, 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 let's remember those folks, and uh, then we will dive into Galatians. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity just to, to gather tonight right here online. Father, we thank you for our, our online family that uh, is committed, God, just to being here and, and to being with one another, even though that we're all in our homes, but we're together, Father, with you. Father, we lift up these individually to you tonight. Father, we know that you know what's going on in each of their lives. We know that you have a plan. We know that you have a purpose. Father, we pray for divine healing, Lord, in these families and these people that are struggling with different things. Father, we've got several that, that are going to be on our hearts but just didn't quite make it out uh, I, 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 so that everybody knows, but you know them. And God, we just pray for that. We pray for our church. God, we pray that you will continue, Lord, to strengthen Ridgewood. We pray, Father, that you will use us, Father, just as a beacon of light here. Lord, in the darkness of the Delta. God, give us opportunities to tell others about you. Father, we pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance. Because, Father, we don't want to get ahead of you. We want to do exactly as you are calling us to be. Father, tonight, forgive us. Father, open our hearts and open our minds as we seek to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I'm going to sneak this over here real quick. And then we are going to head over into the book of Galatians. Now, we're going to be in chapter 5, okay? Chapter 5, so I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds to go ahead and get that and uh, get kind of settled in. When we began the book of Galatians, we said that it was called, do uh, you remember this? It was called the Magna Carta of Christian Liberty. The Magna Carta of Christian Liberty. Uh, Galatians is the book. I mean, it is that book that truly assaults what we can call a bondage of legalism uh, more directly than any other book in the Bible. 
And with the exception of the book of Romans, uh, Galatians most thoroughly develops the answer to the age-old question, are we saved by believing or are we saved by achieving? And uh, man, Paul just uncorks it here in this book to the churches in Galatia. Paul broke down this entire letter in what we can say it in three words. You are free. You can write that down in your notes. That's the entire theme of the book of Galatians. You are free. But just as it is today, no one is immune to the temptation to drift away from that one true message of the gospel. Have you noticed that the further we go in time, that somebody is always wanting to add something else to the gospel to make it relevant or take something away from the gospel in order to justify something? Let me just tell you real quick, you cannot add to, you you cannot take away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is perfect in its entirety. In its entirety, can you talk about it? There is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing that you can do to change it. When you change the gospel of Jesus Christ, you change the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is no longer the same. So we have to understand that. We've already covered section one in the book. Now, we broke it down into three sections when we first began. We've already covered section one, which was the first two chapters, chapters one and two. And there, in those two chapters, Paul gave us his defense of the one true gospel. Then we motivated on into section two, which was chapters three and four. And here we looked at at Paul's doctrinal teachings, in specific, the freedom from legalism. Now, tonight, we're going to begin this last section. It's going to cover uh, the last two chapters, five and six. And it's going to contain practical appeals Uh, and specifically focusing on the freedom to love and the freedom to serve. Now, what I want to do tonight is as we begin chapter 5, I want to read the first six verses. We're probably not going to get to it all tonight, but let's just go ahead and read this and let's see what Paula says. Now, remember, this is now in the backdrop uh, or against the backdrop of chapters 1 through 4. Paul says this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again. Catch the word again. Do not be tangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Now I see here's Paul. And he's beginning to lay out the, the, the life application, if you will, of what he has been talking about and developing for the first four chapters. When we enter here, okay, and this is what we got to get out of these last two chapters. Paul is, is basically telling them, look, y'all, I've already told you the what, I've told you the why, and I've told you the how. Now go do it. You've got the goods. Now go do it. Now is the time to put into practice. Literally, now is the time to walk in the truth that I've already presented you. Paul starts this whole thing out with this phrase, stand therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. I love this word stand. Now, this is the exact same word, and I'm going to flick over just a couple of pages. This is the exact same word that Paul uses in Ephesians chapter 6. So go ahead and jump on over there with me. This is just four or five pages ahead. you got the book of Galatians, and then you got the book of Ephesians. So go ahead and roll on over there with me, because I want you to read this 
as well. This is Paul talking now to the church at Ephesus, and he's going to use and reuse this word and this mental concept of the word stand. Let's pick up chapter 6, verse 11. Paul says this, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, say it out loud, stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Okay. We can now tie this in, in, entire mentality together between Galatians and between Ephesians. What Paul is doing here, especially in, in the Ephesian text, is he's, he's calling on Christians to take a firm position. I'm talking a locked and loaded position that I'm going to move forward. I am not going to run from the spiritual battles that I have with Satan and all of his minions. Literally, the phrase is to stand. I want you to take this and I want you to stand up against the battles. I don't want you to cower down. I don't want you to think that they are greater than you. I want you to stand firm, stand forward, understanding that God has you right where he wants you to stand. The same terminology... The same terminology applies here in the book of Galatians. Paul is saying that we are to stand fast. That same thing. Don't you run from this. Don't you turn away. Don't you back down. Stand fast in the fact that it's Jesus, not the Judaizers, that has set you free. The Judaizers have nothing to do with it. The legalists, they've had nothing to do with it. It is all Jesus. Folks, we need to hang on to that. If we don't get another thing out of this text, let's understand something that Jesus and Jesus alone is what sets us free. So somebody say amen to that. Jesus is what sets us free. There's nothing you have done. There's nothing that you can do. There's no law that you can obey that's going to change that. There is no checkoff box. There's no this or there's no that. It's all Jesus. Jesus is the one that has set us free. If we live in bondage to legalism, now you hear what I'm saying. If we live in bondage to legalism, it isn't God who designed it. God isn't the one that said, uh, and who have I got on here? Mary Winton, Mary Winton, you need to do this, this, and this. Or Sandy, you need to do this, this, and this. Johnny Smith, Juan Arnold, uh, Larry Jones, uh, uh, you put your name in there. You need to do this, or you need to do this, or this needs to happen in order for you to. No, 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 no. If we live in bondage to legalism, it has nothing to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with it. God did not design it. That is mankind. That goes right back to what Paul was saying is, is you cannot add to the gospel. You cannot take this part of the gospel and you cannot add this part of the world and make it one. It's not the same. It's just not the same. Christ has made us free. You might want to write that in the margin of your Bibles. Christ is the one who has made us free. Freedom is a gift from Jesus. Freedom is a gift from Jesus given to us and received by faith. One of my morning routines, one of my, my, my morning rituals is, is as I'm going about my morning routine, getting ready to get set up and I do my morning lives, one of my morning routines is I quote in my head John 3.16 and 3.17 because that is what sets my day. That is what gets me started. And, I, and, and as I say it, I'm thinking about the world that's around me. I'm thinking about the conditions of the delta. And so I want you to just hear exactly those words under that microscope. And then I want you to hear it under the fact that it is Jesus, the one that has made us free. So let's just listen to this, okay? John 3, 16 and 17 says this, that's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have 
everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There is nowhere in that text that tells us that it's Jesus and something else. Nowhere in it. The, the thing is, is that Jesus is the one that sets us free. You can hang your hat on it. You can take it to the bank and there's nothing else. And whatever we encounter in this world, whatever we encounter, and folks, there's different denominations that's out here even today that want to challenge this. Here's the thing. If they can't back it in scripture, it's worthless. Amen. If they can't back their thought pattern or their doctrine or their belief in God's word, it's worthless. This is the only thing that you and I have to stand on, and that is God's word. And we've talked about that, about the everlasting, inerrant, infallible, inspired word of God, and it lasts. We just heard this this past Sunday. It lasts forever. It's not going away. So Paul understands this, and he is trying to get this across to these, these, these believers, these Christians in Galatians who are battling the legalists that's in the churches. And by the way, do you remember what I talked about on Sunday? That in every, in every church, there's someone that's got the spirit of being unable to love, uh, or there's some, you know, there's cantankerous folks and unlovable folks. Okay. Let me just tell you something. Along with that, there's some, uh, pretty much in every church that is legalist. They're here. They're in here, okay? I, I, some are easy to spot and some are not. But you cannot add to the gospel. If you don't take anything else out of this tonight, understand these words. You cannot add to or take away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is all we need to be set free. And that is the thrust of the message that Paul is trying to get to here to these, these believers that scattered around in those churches in, in Galatia. If, okay, when we struggle to free ourselves, that's when we get more bogged down. Paul says we get entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And, and you see, when you really think about it, and it comes back to that, 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 that opening statement, Stand fast. When you think about that, to stand fast, it takes effort. It means that you and I have got to be focused in on standing fast. We've got to be determined. We've got to be committed. You just don't wake up every morning and go, you know, willy dilly on about your day and be uh, subjective to the, the the winds of this world to blow in and out and to change the way that you think. You've got to be locked in and you've got to know without a doubt every day that I am not budging off God's word. This is what it is. And I'm not going to let anything that I read, I see, or I hear change that. And let me just say something. You might be, be able to say, well, Jim, I, none of that's going to sway me. You need to hear what I'm saying, okay? If you spend any time in the media, whether you are watching it on TV, whether you are watching it and reading it on social media, or you're hearing it on the radio, or you're reading it in a newspaper or a magazine, all of that combined is going to be a tax on your religious freedom and is going to want to take it away. Every single day that I dive into something to read and to try to just get caught up in the world and what's going on, there is a tax on social, or excuse me, on Christian freedom. And social media is the world's worst. I'm just going to be honest with you. They are out here, and they are out here by the tens of thousands trying to get you to deviate your thinking that Christ is the only way. So it takes effort. It takes determination. It takes commitment to stand fast. That's why Paul started out this chapter. He's, he's telling them, look, guys, I've already told you what's going on. I've laid it out there. I've, I've, I've proved the doctrine to you. Now just go do it. Stand fast. Don't you dare back down. You stand up to them. Now, when we get into verses 2 and 4, uh, Paul is going to be talking about the danger of embracing the law as a way 
to walk with God. Let's read those again, verses uh, uh, 2 two through 4. Paul says this, Indeed I, Paul, this, in other words, this is me talking to you. Indeed I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. In other words, it ain't about you being circumcised. For all of you Gentiles that's out here, you do not have to be circumcised to be like the Jews. Paul says, pay attention. You don't have to do that. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised. In other words, for those of you who've done it in an attempt to become a Jew, what does it say? That he is a debtor to keep the whole law. And we're going to come back to that too, by the way. We're going to come back to that. Okay, the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, for you have fallen from grace. Okay, when when you really think about it, when we really believe that we have to hold on to or we got to obey the law, go through that checklist, it's legalism. When we really believe that as a way To walk with God? In other words, if we believe that that is the mechanism that I am able to walk with God, what we have actually done is we have let go of God. Now you think about that. When we feel that we have to do this, 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 and this, what we have just said is that God, I'm I'm going to walk over here for a little while because I think this is a better way. And that's pretty foolish, isn't it? That's pretty self-righteous if you just want to start thinking about it. And Paul is doing his best to get into, get into them and, and to let them know, guys, this is just not it. And, and that bunch of Judaizers that was among the Gentiles wanted them to think that they could have both Jesus and a law relationship with God. Now, do we see this type pattern in our country today. In other words, you can have Jesus and you can have this also. Can you think about that? I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds. Remember, there's a delay. Uh, I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds to kind of process this. What do we see in our country today, in our culture, that is saying and is teaching that, well, you can have Jesus and you can also have this and this is not of God, but you can have it both. It's okay. Can you think of something? Can you think of something? Go ahead and uh, uh, just, just kind of hit me with your best shots on this because I want to see what you're thinking. Because it's out here, folks. Oh, it's out here quick. And let me just say this. Just because the Supreme Court makes something a law does not mean that God has ordained it. Just because the Supreme Court makes something into a law does not mean that God still doesn't call it a sin. Amen. And we have to understand that. Just because man says something does not mean God says something. And if God doesn't say it, then it is nothing to us. This is what we got to follow. This is, this is the one who set us free. And that is what Paul is trying to get through to the Galatian Christians. When we have something that rolls in our way and tries, tries to tell us that, that you can have both Jesus and a law type relationship, or you can have this and this, folks, it is nothing but heresy. It is heresy. Let's see. Pam says, new age for one, acceptance of blatant sins such as homosexuality and abortion. That is exactly true. We have got folks out here right now, here in America, and there's some here in Arkansas, uh, and I would dare say there's some here in the Delta that believe that you can do this and you can hold on to Jesus, but yet I can also say that homosexuality is not a sin and that abortion is okay. The, it's here. Johnny, the world would have us believe we don't need to sacrifice anything to have a relationship with you. That's true. That's right. The world will tell you it's okay to have Jesus. You don't have to do nothing. It's basically a name it, claim it type mentality. If you just want to know the truth, when you roll into that, that's very true. Both of those rock solid. I, guys, there's, there is, is, is beliefs out here that says you can hold on to Jesus and you can go live like the world. There's, there's, well, you can have Jesus and you can still live in sin. You can do this or you can do that or, or you can uh, uh, approve of this. 
God don't need your approval or my approval for anything. God says it, done, done. Prosperity gospel, amen, that progressive Christianity, prosperity gospel, all of this falls into line with this exact same uh, ludicrous stuff that, that is, is coming through with these Judaizers. And, and Paul is simply saying this, it is not an option. You need to get it off the table. If it's not 1,000% about Jesus, then it's not about Jesus at all. It's either all Jesus or it's not. And that's the whole thrust. And he says, stand fast in that. Don't you dare change. Don't you turn around. Don't you run. Don't you give in. You stand fast. He's extremely clear that the, 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 the system, if I can use that word, the system of grace and the system of, of the law is totally in compatible. John Calvin said this years ago, and I, I love this quote from Calvin. He says, whoever wants to be a half, excuse me, whoever wants to have a half Christ loses the whole. Whoever wants to have a half Christ loses the whole. So true. You cannot have half Jesus. You either have all of him or you don't have none of him. And it's only Jesus that can set you free. That's it. Look at the ending of verse two. I want us to say that if you become circumcised, in other words, if you put yourself under the law, if you fall into that play, if you do this, what's it say? Christ will profit you nothing. See, Paul is telling them that, that if they are more interested in going back under the law, then, then Jesus dying on the cross and pouring out his life for them and, and all of his agony, all of his love that he poured out for them goes right back to John 3, 16, where we're, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That that Jesus, that if, they go, if they're more interested in going back under the law, then all of that with Jesus will profit them nothing. Nothing. Not one single solitary thing. And then Paul ends verse three by saying that every man who goes under the law goes under the whole law, not just a portion of it. In other words, I cannot have Jesus and 15 of the Mosaic laws. The Judaizers, they know the truth and they're trying to get them to go back under every blessed one of them, 613 of them. But it's really easy, easy to think that, well, I can have Jesus and only have to do half of them or a fourth of them or 10 or 20 of them, whatever the case may be. Mm -mm. No, what does he say? He says, you have become, so, and I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised. In other words, if you do this, if you go back under the law, then he is a debtor or he is obligated. That's, that's what, the word we get out of the word debtor. He is obligated to keep every single one of those 613 Mosaic laws. See, Paul is not pulling any punches here. He's, he's bringing them out right now. It's like, okay, now you know the truth. Now you know what's going on. And now I need you to understand exactly what's taking place with those Judaizers. Does the phrase wolves in sheep's clothing ring a bell here? Can we see that? in play in these Galatian churches? That answer would be yes. We can see it everywhere. And we know that the churches in Galatia, we know that this was a region. This was not just a church. This was multiple churches. And so that means that these multiple churches were all having the same issues, that none of them was... Uh, uh, they were, they were not, they didn't escape from it. I can't even think of the word I'm looking for here. None of these churches were exempt from the problems of the Judaizers. They were in there and they were attacking them all. And so, have you noticed that when you read the New Testament, there's just this general theme of false teachers and false doctrines? It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Pam, Adam and Eve proved we couldn't follow one command, much less, to say, but boy, amen to that. Amen to that. That's a whole other ball game, but amen to that. I mean, 
the problems were everywhere. It just didn't single out one specific church. And I think we we, we need to look at this uh, under a different umbrella as well. And so many times we as a church think that, okay, woe is us. We're the ones that's always having problems. Things always happen to us. That's bogus. It's a $3 bill. Every church you can think of, name it. I mean, whether they're here in our association, in the state, in the country, whatever. Every church is dealing with issues because a church that is seeking to obey God and to follow God and to make an impact in their area for the gospel of Christ is under attack. Make no mistake, every one. And so when, when you really begin to peel back these layers, then you've got to understand that the Galatians were really trying to get things right here. And that's why these, uh, these attacks were left and right. And Paul was coming back in and trying to just undergird them and say, guys, you got to pay attention to what's going on. you got to stand fast. Because if you go back under this law, then, then what, what does he say? Christ is going to profit you nothing. I mean, it's like he did no, It was all in vain. None of that worked if you go back. And, and if you go back under this, then guys, you can't just go under one or two of these, these, these crazy laws. And I know the law because I used to enforce the law. I used to be the guy that would drag you out and to, to kill you, to stone you, to whatever. I, I would put you in prison because you didn't obey the law. I get it. And you need to hear from me. If there's anybody that understands the depth and the magnitude of this, it's me. And you can't go back in it just partially. If you go back in, you go in and you are obligated. You are in debt to the whole law. Paul's very, very plain. Now, when we roll into verse 4, and, uh, and I think I'm going to just, just kind of kind of bring it off uh, bring it off here. Uh, verse 4 uh, can be interpreted in many different directions. And I don't want us to miss this. I don't want to uh, uh, really get off on track. And so I'm, I'm going to read verse 4 again. And then we're going to, like I said, we're just going to kind of uh, come to a halt. We'll pick this up next Wednesday. But Paul says this, You have become estranged from Christ. Where do we hear that word estranged at in today's society? Where do we hear the word estranged? Somebody go ahead and hit me with that. Where do we hear the word estranged? Estranged. You have become estranged from Christ. He's telling this to the church. You have become estranged from Christ. What does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? Where do we hear the word estranged? Do we hear the word today uh, being used in marriages. This is my estranged husband or my estranged wife. In other words, they are not with me. They are still my wife, but they are not together. They are estranged. They are separated. Okay. They are separated. Okay. They're still legally together, but they are separated. Is what we have. Family. Yes, exactly. They're family. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, key word here, yes, thank you, Tommy. Wife is a strange from us. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. You have fallen from grace. Now, we have denominations that are out here that do believe that you can lose your salvation. They teach, they believe that you can literally hear these words, fall from grace, okay? Let's be perfectly clear as we kind of bring this down tonight, okay? If you are saved, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, nothing can take that away from you. If you are saved, you are always saved. Always. But we have those that tend to separate, don't we? Us good Baptists use the phrase backsliders. They step away from their path with Christ. You've heard it. I've heard it. We've taught it. And that's what we're saying here. 
is that the Galatian Christians, what does he say here? You have become estranged from Christ. You have separated yourself from Christ. You separated yourself from Christ, okay? Key word here. You who attempt to be justified by law. In other words, if you are in this camp to where you are trying to be justified by the law, you have stepped away from Jesus. Jesus is not the one who moved. He didn't go anywhere. His love hasn't changed. His grace hasn't changed. His mercy hasn't changed. And the freedom in him hasn't changed. But you have estranged yourself from him. So you have fallen, but he's still here. You've fallen. You have stepped away. You have fallen from grace. We can read this text. We have to know, we have to know that Paul is not telling them y'all are lost again. He is not saying this by any stretch of the imagination. It is just not. It does not affirm the possibility of the losing of salvation. If the Galatians seek to be justified by the keeping of the law, then they have abandoned this sphere of God's grace where salvation is experienced and where it's enjoyed. Any attempt, hear this, any attempt to get you away from God justified by the law, moves a man away from the grace of God. If you are saved, you are always saved. Maybe you're here or maybe you're watching this later and, and maybe you're the one who says, well, I've just, I've kind of gotten off track. Does God really love me? Am I really saved? The answer is unequivocally Yes, God has never stopped loving you, nor will he ever stop loving you. But God is not the one who moved. You're the one who moved. And it is up to you to come back. And, and we come back to this word estranged. For, and, I, and I'll use a, a married couple, for one spouse to be estranged, for them to come back together means that the one who left has got to come back. And that's exactly where God is today. If you are here, if you're, if you're listening to me, get this. If you have stepped away from Jesus, you can step back. He's not going anywhere, and he's waiting with open arms to embrace you, to love you back into the fold, and that's exactly what he wants to do. He does not want to see you struggle. He does not want to see you suffer the consequences of your, your actions, of your disobedience. He's ready for you. He's ready. Won't you come back to Jesus? Won't you make the, 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 the attempt? To come back. It's just like that, that time when you first stepped out of that aisle, when you stepped out to go to Jesus. You remember that first step was a humdinger? I mean, it was just tough. You couldn't, your, your, your first step, your foot weighed a thousand pounds and you couldn't move it. You couldn't get it out of that pew or you couldn't get it out of that chair. It didn't want to go anywhere. But as soon as you took that first step and you lifted up the weight of the world that your foot was holding on to because Satan did not want you to take that step and you lifted that first step and the very second you set it down, it's like every bit of that thing come crashing down and all the weight was gone because you took the first move and everything else, you literally just glided right on up there to the preacher. Guys, nothing's changed. You got to take that first step. If not, what does he say? Then you will be obligated to the whole law. You won't have Jesus. And so if you're listening to me tonight, whether it's live or whether you catch this on a rewind, take the first step. Take it tonight. Take it right now when you're listening to this. Just simply say, Jesus, 
I'm not where I need to be. And I so get it. I don't want to be estranged from you anymore. I want to come back. And I want to come back now. Will you make that your prayer? Will you make that your desire to get away from the bondage of the law? What does Paul call it? He calls it to be entangled again with that yoke of bondage. You're yoked to the world. And Jesus says, I can set you free. Come to me. Folks, that's all I've got for tonight. Thank you for hanging out with me on this Wednesday. Please be careful tonight uh, if we have any more storms or wind that comes through. Uh, I want you to be safe. If you need anything, please, please let me know. You can call me. You can message me. You can email me, ridgewoodpastor at gmail.com. Uh, if you need Gloria, same thing. You can call her. You can, you can message her. You can email her at secretary at ridgewoodbaptistar.org. Tomorrow morning at 1030, our ladies are going to be meeting and they are going to be starting to put the eggs, uh, the, the candy in the eggs to get ready for our, our babies on uh, uh, April the, the 3rd for our Easter egg hunt. And so uh, Mary Weddington's kind of leading that charge. And so uh, if you have any questions, see Mary and I'm sure she can use all the hands she could, but that's tomorrow. And, and uh, ladies are going to be meeting at our church campus to do that. Lord willing, at 9 o'clock, we are going to be taking a deeper dive into uh, 1 Samuel 15. If you have not had a chance to stay with us during the mornings or to catch it live, you really need to catch the book of 1 Samuel. It is incredible what this book does to set us up in previous history and what it sets us up as moving forward. But you might want to catch that. Friday morning, same thing, Lord willing, we'll be here for our coffee chat. And Sunday morning, we're going to be on campus, Lord willing, Sunday school. Uh, Brother Johnny's going to be teaching our Sunday school at 9.30, and then at 10.30, we're going to continue looking at a sojourner's guide to hope in a hostile world as we continue to break down First Peter. Uh, if you have anything, a prayer request, make sure that you send them to us. We'll be glad to get those out uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, lots of people saying good night, and I love you guys so very much. Thank you for making uh, Ridgewood your place tonight. And I'm thankful that uh, uh, we was able to keep the internet, and hopefully you did too. Folks, that is all I've got for the night. I love you, and Lord willing, I'll see you at 9 a.m. in the morning. In the meantime, good night all. Bye-bye.